fucking nice, right? I'm feeling it, man. Let's give Capcom a round of applause, man. Let's do it. Give them a round of applause. They deserve it. Because they're obviously using their Hiresa. And that makes me very, very happy. Well done, man. And secondly, Capcom, I forgive you. I forgive you for that absolute garbage trash you tried to give us in 2013. DMC. With Dante, the donkey hunter. Who looked like he was a drug addict that escaped from prison. Who worked part time in a gay strip club. Man. I forgive you for that. This has made it all better. This has made it so good, man. I mean, look, I'm the biggest fan of Nero. You know, let's not, you know, beat about the bush or try to pretend that, oh, Nero is all good. No, he's not good. But I'll take this over what potentially could have been our fate now i mean look man it's bursting time it's getting bigger bang 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 on oh, my devil trigger ha <laughs> ha we here we here man the one thing i did that i hated about devil may cry 4 was the fact that it was so boring yeah and i found it boring because the the combat one it was it was actually okay actually technical but i didn't like nero I wanted to play with Dante, but most of all, I didn't like Nero. I didn't like his attitude. I didn't like who I was playing with. It's that simple. The motherfucker didn't look like he was having any fun whatsoever. And Devil May Cry is all about the main character having fun, disrespectful to legendary demonic demons from hell. Yeah? Whose nonchalant, cavalier attitude to dancing with death was nothing to him that's what dante was to me he was a motherfucker that didn't give a fuck about anything upset having fun and accomplishing his mission at the same time dante -a. dante -a -a tay now i don't know what version of dante we've got in this game yeah i do know i don't really like the look Scruffy Dante, I don't, I don't actually like it, but I'll take it because, as I said, I got a visual of a world without crazy Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry is supposed to be crazy, breathtaking, stylish, nutty, madness, stylish action, bizarre. Madness. Look in this trailer, yeah? The girl, Nicole, driving the van, flipped the van, Nero was in it, he jumped out while the car was spinning, he was jump, running around the car in the air, jumping, shooting demons, car was still the van was still spinning, he jumped on another car, shooting the demons, killing them off, car was still spinning. Landed on the car, kept going around the car, spinning, jumped in, barrel rolled, landed normally, he was in the car. That is the madness I needed to see in Devil May Cry. And he had that smirk on his face. The motherfucker looks like he's finally having fun, man. If that main character has fun, I'm having fun. And then the music was getting me going. And I was, I enjoyed the trailer. I actually didn't mind looking at Nero because he was having fucking fun. I want to have fun when I'm playing video games. I don't only play with no fucking depressed fucking goth. You know what I mean? And that's what I felt like Dan Nero was. I'm kind of not feeling that now. Just from the trailer, he seemed more Dante-like. You know, more cavalier, more disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? More brazen in the face of absolute fucking mortal, um, mortal peril. Right? He's just like, what happened? 
big monster, demonic, absolute demonic power that could take over an entire town, yeah? And Nero just sat there like, what happened? What are you saying? Ain't nothing happened. He's, yeah, that's it, that's it. Let me tell you something, once upon a time in Japan, there was a magical place called Capcom where Hideki Kamiya, Hideki Itsuno, Shinji Mikami, and Yoshihiro Uno, and other legendary game creators worked together. That doesn't exist anymore. But these guys brought us games like Street Fighter, Rival Schools, Vampire Savior, Resident Evil, Okami, God Hand. These guys, just those guys, they brought us those games. That doesn't exist anymore because they're now Hideki Kamiya is now in Platinum Games, Shinji Mikami is in Tango, Yoshiro Uno, Yoshi, Yoshiro Uno, whatever, can't say his name properly, right? And it's Uno Hideki, they still in Capcom, and they still do. Hideki Tsuno is making Dragon's Dogma, bringing us Devil May Cry. Yoshiro Uno, he's still in Capcom. He brought us Street Fighter, he's still doing the Street Fighter series. Still doing good work, right? So the fact that they put Hideki Tsuno on stage, right? And he was actually telling us about the game, saying this is the best game I've ever made. It's massive. It's massive. Like, that guy, it's because of him we got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. He directed that game. Um, Star Gladiator. Um, Star Gladiator. Power Stone. Capcom versus SNK. Rival Schools. No, I think I said Rival Schools already. He gave us, he did the Devil May Cry 3. Unfortunately, he did Devil May Cry 2 as well. But he only did Devil May Cry 2 in the last phase. So basically, the last three or four months of that game, he was involved in it. Um, he also worked with Shin Megami Tensei, the one that had that Dante in it. He did, I think he did play a role in it. But I'm not too sure what his role in making that game was. But he did definitely have a role in that game. Um, if you remember a game called Auto Modelista, right? A driving game. Proper godlike driving game. He's the one that worked on that game. Um, yeah, Capcom Fighting Jam. Dark Stalkers, I said Project Justice, Power Stone. Um, He's worked on a lot of games. Like, he's been director of a lot of godlike games. He decades to know. So, for him to come out and say, This is my best game I've ever made, that's massive, first of all. And second, man, that trailer was just good, man. The music, the pacing, the style, the visual. The visuals are absolutely incredible. Like, what the fuck? But I'm not surprised because if you think about it, in um, the. PS3 and the Xbox 360 generation, the two best visually looking games to me was Devil May Cry 4 and Resident Evil 5. Those were the two most visually looking games on that entire generation cycle. Nothing, nothing beat those two games. Nothing. So the fact that Devil May Cry 5 is coming out and it looks heads and tails over everything and anything I've seen so far. No surprise. No surprise whatsoever. So, um, yeah, that trailer was godlike, man. And another thing that I've, I've been reading, I've been doing like a little bit of research on it. And you know when you look at the um, Devil May Cry V or DMC 5 or whatever you want to call it, Nero arm is gone. But you actually see the story of when he lost his arm. But apparently, from what I've read, basically from like the Devil May Cry 5 website and Devil May Cry 5 have got website, I'll put all the links down there, right? 
He lost his arm a while ago. So that's actually a flashback of not during the game, but before this game. He actually loses his arm, and that's how he's got the, um, the metal arm, the prosthetic arm. And that girl is a mechanic, basically, who works with him. And he's got, he owns Devil May Cry now, the Devil Hunting Company. And he actually works with another dude who you can actually see in the official artwork where you see Nero and Dante walking with some other guy who's just all in black and he's got like tattoos on his arms. Basically, that guy works with or for Nero, basically, in the Devil May Cry um, demon hunting company. Right, and then of course there's Nicole, who's the girl that is his mechanic that works on his prosthetic arms. So I think it's those two working for Devil May Cry. Well, Dante might be the owner of it, but he's always away. So Dante's the COO or the CEO of Devil May Cry. Nero's the manager, and he's got Nico as the lady, as the um, engineer. I like her; she seems cool. Right, and then you've got the other mystery character who's probably like maybe the lieutenant of um, Nero. You know, so I don't know what's going on, but it looks really cool, man. Right, and so it's up to date. That's why he's so comfortable with the arm, because he's had the arm a long time. Um, and he, of course, now he doesn't have his devil arm. He has, to be, he has to make up with it by having, you know, the mechanic who can make the arm and give him different abilities. Because I do think the arms have got different abilities, right? Because if you look carefully in that trailer, you see there's one time he uses his arm and it's like a clock comes out of the arm and it stops time or slows down time above the head of one of the enemies. And you see it on the, above his head it says like 92, 91, 89, 88, 87, 85, right? And so it's like a countdown a timer going down in terms of seconds right so um and then you saw another one where he jumps and you see he does that kind of like a boost jump i don't know whether he's dashing in the air due to the arm or whether he just charged up the um what is his gun called i think it's called the blue rose or something like that and then it makes him it pushes him back so i don't know what it was but if you look at the trailer you see he does something like a, like a, a jump back like a little boost back or something like that right so um yeah, I'm real happy with it. I'm really happy with the um, the Death May Cry trailer. I was fucking hyped. Uh, I want to see more. I want to see more. I like the music. Um, I like the boss that you see in there. Kind of like a, a mix of Beowulf and... Um, what's the name again? Um, I can't remember the spider boss from Death May Cry um, 1. Right, so it looks like a little bit... I think it's Phantom. I'm, 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 I think it's Phantom. So a little bit of a mashup between uh, Phantom from Devil May Cry 1, the Spider Fire Boss, and Beowulf from Devil May Cry 3. Right, um, the main, the, the girl, the mechanic, she looks real cool, real funny. Um, you know, bit of character, banter, dialogue, light of the mood. Um, yeah, I want Dante. Dante, I'm not, as I said, as I said before, I'm not a fan of um, Scruffy Dante, but um, I believe in Itsuno. I believe in Itsuno and he'll do the right thing. So I want to see E3, what's going to happen during E3, if um, Hideki Itsuno is going to do any interviews. I'd love it if he does, because I want to hear more about what he's got to say about Devil May Cry. And um, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say about that, man. I loved what I saw, I was very, very happy. I like the combat. Combat looks cool. Still looks as very, very much the same as um, Nero from Devil May Cry um, 4. From the little I could make out of it, the animations look to be pretty much exactly the same as Devil May Cry 4, um, Nero. But we'll see. As the game progresses, more will be revealed and we'll get to see and understand more. So yeah, Warriors, um, I want to say thank you for tuning in, watching, sticking with me. I want to know what you guys think of this Devil May Cry uh, 5. Because you know I'm a massive, massive fan of Devil May Cry. I love me some Devil May Cry. So you can imagine, I'm a kid in the candy store. And as I told you before, when I saw this, I went ballistic. I went nuclear. And I went into orbit. Lucky I was watching it on YouTube so I could actually scroll back. So um, yeah, Warriors. 
that's it from me. I want to say thank you. Um, stay blessed. Take care. And um, yeah, watch out for more, and more of my videos because I've got a couple days off work. And I'm just going to be enjoying E3. And it's going to be my birthday on the 15th of June. Right, so I probably won't be doing, I don't know what I'll be doing on the 15th of June. But um, yeah, I won't be doing any videos. So I will be doing videos talking about E3. And um, yeah, if you wanted me to give my opinion on the Xbox press conference, I would give it an A. That's what I personally would give it. Did they show anything on there to make me switch my Xbox on? No. But I appreciate the fact that they were just talking about video games. More video games. And they didn't have no jabroni wearing a suit. No, sorry, a jabroni in a t-shirt and jeans and sneakers trying to tell me about video games and what I should be expecting in video games in the next 10 years. I appreciate them not doing that and just getting on with showing us all their games. I wasn't really impressed with their games. The only thing I actually liked was the Gears of War trailer because I was actually immersed in that um, and the Cyberpunk. So if I'm being absolutely honest, yeah, the fact that I saw Nier Automata coming to the um, Xbox, the fact that I saw um, Cyberpunk 2077, Kingdom Hearts, and I saw Death May Cry, and that other game, Ori, or something like that, right? Those games, for me, game made it go to an A. It's that simple. I know it's broken logic, but I don't give a damn. I don't really care about um, the technicalities of those games are going to come on the play. I mean, am I going to get all the games, all the games that come out on the PlayStation and Xbox, I'm going to get them on the PlayStation, right? But the fact that it was on the PlayStation press conference, the Xbox press conference, I like it. I associated with that. So I say, you get an A from me. Now we're going to see what other people are doing. So, um, yeah, I don't want to waffle on. This is all about Devil May Cry. So, Warriors, comment section. I w I'd love to hear what you guys think of Devil May Cry 5 or um, Devil May Cry V, DMC 5, DMC V, whatever you want to call it. Let's start talking about it. All right, Warriors, take care, stay blessed. And yeah, stay tuned for my my coverage of E3. Later.